And you know, I think Beast would have been a great HBO thing. Had a lot could have had some freedom from all of that. We could have had the hairbrushing. We could have had the hairbrushing. Well, you know, I was saying earlier that had all of that happened, even a few years later, there would have been a thousand places. I mean, even at the time that the show was going, the Sci-Fi Network was coming up. And at the time, all they were doing was new, and they were reruns. And well, of course, now they're producing half of the science fiction television. And if they had been in that position, when we were going off the air, they would have done anything to have the show. And, and they would have done a very respectful job because you know, they, they, do a, they do a good job on their shows, you know? I watch the Sci-Fi Channel all the time. I love the Stargate shows. And, you know, they saved that from Showtime, didn't they? And continued on, and how long has it gone on? But at the time, they didn't even conceive of themselves as being originators of material. Well, these are my thoughts about Beauty and the Beast continuing on after it was canceled for what they are worth, and you know, feel free to disagree with me. But great fantasy has a purpose. Great fantasy awakens in us our awareness of the archetypal. Great fantasy, like great fairy tales, has something about it that once you experience it, you are transformed. You are not the same person that you were before you knew about it. Beauty and the Beast came at a certain time, there was a reason why, and we'll never know, but the universe set it up that that was the timing for this show to go through. Because if you think about it, what are the odds that a show about a beautiful girl and a beast-like guy, and, and it's a fairy tale, and it's Beauty and the Beast, and they live in the tunnels underground in, in, uh, Santa, in uh, New York, uh, you know, what are the odds that suits could be convinced of this. It's a miracle this show got on the air. That said, where the storyline went and the reasons the storyline went in the direction it did have a lot more to do with outside influences coming in and saying this must be changed because we don't get it and it's not working for us. So when the third season was changed so much, not only did it not gain a new audience, it lost much of the audience it already had because many of you couldn't stand. It was too much of a jolt to, to bear. Um, for what it's worth, and, and I discussed this with Ron Coslow because I wasn't sure where to take the Night of Beauty graphic novel because the decision for Kathy to be killed off got made right after the story that, that I had written had been accepted, which was different from the story that ended up in Night of Beauty and Kathy was alive. And I said to Ron Coslow, and I, and I always say Ron Coslow because I want to differentiate between Ron Perlman and Ron Coslow. Um, well, do Vincent and Catherine get to say goodbye? I mean, do they, I mean, I mean, Vincent did say, if you die, I die. I mean, is, is Vincent gonna die too? No, no, that's not what the suits wanted. They wanted Batman. And they thought they were going to get more guys watching the show if Vincent became Batman and became more violent. That's not what happened. So with Night of Beauty, what that ended up being was I felt it was really, really important not just for Vincent and Catherine to get a chance to say goodbye to each other, a really good goodbye, but for all of us to get a chance to say goodbye to Kathy. I mean, if she had to go, if, if, if that was what the powers that be were saying. So some people wrote me and said that they objected to my going along with the third season and I should never have done the story because they don't believe Catherine's dead and, and as far as they're concerned, the third season never happened. But I respect the creators. I, res I respected Ron Coslow's willingness to, to stay true to his creation and at the same time try to keep it going based on what the new suits were telling him. 
it, it was it was an impossible situation. So that's why Night of Beauty happened, and that's that was the goodbye that I could come up with for Catherine and Vincent. Sort of the only one they got. I tell you, the, the ending, uh, there were a lot of things. I, I, I had a lot of trouble watching the, the one where Catherine dies. With uh, a lot of the actors that I know, I could sort of watch them do anything and stay removed. With Linda, for some reason, I've always had a hard time watching things happen to her in movies. And uh, was it Children of the Corn, I think, is where her face gets cut. And that, uh, that really bothered me when I saw it. And, I can barely stand to watch the delivery of the child and her death. It was horrid and uh, we'll see. We'll see. unbearable. Yeah, but this is so true, and, and I think this shows what happens when male sensibilities from outside come in and muck with something that women have taken to their hearts, because I don't think these guys have any idea how Catherine's death, the manner of it, would affect us women. Because it is probably our worst nightmare. And uh, all of us can relate to being not only just held prisoner, but having a child ripped away from us. This is primal for women. Women will fight to the death not to have this happen. And we know that Kathy would have fought to the death for her baby if she had been physically able to. So not only was her child taken from her, but she's poisoned and cannot fight. All of us women out there were saying, good God almighty, here this woman has been established as one of the strongest female characters ever in the history of television. And she's given this kind of death it wasn't acceptable to me. The only way I could deal with it was to do Night of Beauty. Um, I can imagine how you guys felt. So. She was fighting doors. And of course, 